Your faith has everything to do with everyday life. And God wants you to have a more joyful life. That's what we dive into on our show, The Chris Stefanik Show. Check it out. So uh, tell me about your vocation to the priesthood. Well, I uh, had a conversion November 20th, 1998. That was a date. Yeah, I broke my arm. I mean, that's like, that's it. That's like, you got to, yeah. rem- that's a stake in the ground. What feast day is that? I have no idea. You keep talking. I'm looking up okay. what feast day that is. So November 20th, 1998, had a, had, broke my arm, gave my life over to the Lord. It was beautiful, bountiful. Mm. February 20th, 1998. Edmund the Martyr, which... I- King of East Anglia. Okay. Anyway, go ahead. All right, dude. That's uh, that's pray for us. That's uh, that's some of my blood there. I mean, I'm yeah, I'm half cool. English. So. I'll take that. So, February twentieth, nineteen ninety nine. I'm praying. My father had given me when I was a young man the uh, breviary. So he had given. I, we had made a we had made a wedding present of a bed for my brother, and we would pray the Psalms before we work, and then after we would work. It's, I mean, I, I, I'm living the lush life with, awesome. my, with my family. My father, what a gift. He's trying to communicate grace. Yeah. grace. And I loved it, but I couldn't let him. I, so if you're praying with your kids and they don't seem like they like it, don't worry. Maybe they don't, but maybe they do. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they're acting like they don't, but they do. But they do. And by the way, the whole arm broke, broken story, you, you gotta, if you missed our last episode together, you got to look into it. It's an incredible, incredible journey. Yeah. Um, so I had, weary. yeah, so I, I was praying the Psalms, I was praying night prayer, and um, the Holy Spirit came upon me. Well, actually, before I prayed night prayer, I had actually asked the Lord, I said I had some traumatic stuff when I was a kid, and I, and I said, for the first time, I actually asked the Lord, why? Mm. Not why, but why? Like, That's a hard question. It is a hard question. And, uh, and so, so I'm like, why? And then I'm praying the Psalms and the Holy Spirit came upon me in a way that I was like lifted up to the heavens and firmly rooted on the ground. I had needed, had to have no faith because God was present. I felt so enveloped by the Holy Spirit. But it turns out that even after mystical experiences of grace, I mean, it's a, oh, yeah. I mean, it's, like, it's a low end mystical but it's experience. Real. It is real. You still have to go to sleep. So I, yeah. so I, I go to bed. And in the middle of the night, I ended. I was having a dream, and I had this gigantic afro, because <laughs> I had a real one. In, in I, I wish we could. We had footage of this. Dream. Oh man! Oh man! Uh, uh, me too. So, so i and I'm teaching all these white-haired little children, and there was so much love, and and I was wearing a Roman collar. Oh my gosh! And I woke up, and and I had ha- been having this experience where I would look at my watch, and it would be like two twenty-two or five fifty-five, and it was happening kind of on the hour, every hour. And so I just let it be a prayer because I was like, this can't be coincidence. So I just was like, Lord, it's kind of funny when I see that, I say, I love you too, Jesus. It's one of those little built-in reminders that I think it's him. Of course, everything is him saying, I love you. So I, I just yeah. assign that to that. That's cool, right? But and it made you think of the Lord. Yeah, it's a real light grace. It's not. Yeah. not it's. It's not. It's not. It's not something that is going to be super determinative, except for in a certain instance for me. Mm. So I woke up from the dream and I thought to myself, if it's three thirty-three in the morning, because I love three thirty-three. It's Trinitarian. You got three oh, yeah. threes, oh, yeah. three persons, but then you got thirty-three. <laughs> Jesus' age, and I'm. I'm digging it. You know, I, I love it. I love. The non-converted people are watching us right now thinking, you guys are so weird. Yeah. To which we'll say, yes, we own it, but we're yeah. happy. All, <laughs> okay, of, yeah. all of reality is sovereign, is, is under the sovereign rule of God. Yeah, so, it's true. So if you give him an opportunity for grace, he, he's, he is communicating in the ways that we listen. Yeah, why not through our dreams? Why not through the, we, we call it prayer when we talk to God, we call it crazy when we listen to God. Right. Right, it's not, it's not crazy. And Joseph dreamed dreams, there's a history. There is a difference between a spiritual dream and a psychological processing dream. Mm. And the, the spiritual dream is one that is clear, it's on point, There's n- it's not vague, it's not like, and then all of a sudden my ter- grandma, she turned into a throw pillow. And you're <laughs> like, you know, you're like, that's not, <laughs> it's like, whatever. So My brother-in-law once dreamt that he was a piece of custard. What was that? He was a piece of custard. Someone was, and he fell on the floor. Weird. <laughs> That's weird, man. It's weird. It, we right. can do psychoanalysis on that. But no, I know what you're talking about because I've had that kind of dream where it's literally the Lord just like, whoa. Right. So I look over at the clock and it's 3.33 in the morning and all of a sudden my heart opened up 
And I remember the time that I was eight years old. My dad went to, took me to go see the priest and said, consider being a priest. And he gave me the imitation of Christ at eight years old, which anybody who's read the imitation of Christ is like, Ooh. But, but the pictures of it was Ariel Adjaman had these engravings and it was most precious blood virgin and they were mm. so beautiful. Mm. A Colorado artist actually. Really? Yeah. And, uh, and so then, and then I thought about when I was in high school and I remember looking at the priest and I was like trying to find unique clothing because I was like, man, you got to be unique some with clothing. Yeah. And I looked at the priest and I was like, man, I, I wish I could just wear a chasuble. And for some reason I decided to tell my dad. I'm like, dad, I wish I could just wear a chasuble. And he's like, well, you know, son, there is a way you can do that. And I was like, <laughs> la, 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 la. Like, and then, and then all of but a sudden. But chasuble is what a priest is wearing during mass. Right? Yeah, exactly. Really cool thing. And, and it was just moment after moment after moment as I was sitting in my bed. And all of a sudden I realized that I had been called from the beginning to be a priest. And that it was the answer that the trauma in my life was being answered by my call to be a priest. That he had allowed for the training of my soul. Mm. Um, and he had confidence in me. So that's pretty powerful. Oh. So I sat on the edge of my bed and I was like, well, ah, we Praise don't, the Lord. yeah, we don't have to be afraid of anything. We don't have to be afraid of anything. Oh, he's, he, and, and my parents, they always say, if this is the training, what's the mission? If this is the training, what's the mission? Because, oh, boom, I love that. So, so. I, I, I got to rest there for a second. <sighs> that, that's, because you know, when things happen to us, it's like, why did that happen to me? And the Lord's like, it happened for you. I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't make it happen, but I did allow it to happen. There's a weird interaction of divine providence and his sovereignty with things that happen, right? It's the cross. Like, he didn't. He, he didn't force evil. He doesn't, evil doesn't come from God. But he doesn't let it happen with intentionality. No. Right? But, but he allows it for you. Yes. And so that's, that steeled your soul, that strengthened your soul for the priesthood. Oh, my gosh. That's incredible. Opened my soul I, for the priesthood oh. because, because, all, because now the profound configurement to Christ means that we don't, that we become more vulnerable to the world, not less vulnerable. The one who is in greater grace experiences reality more poignantly, not mm. in greater numbness. Mm. You don't, it, it, Jesus didn't numb out to a thing. No. Mary didn't numb out to a thing. The saints, they don't numb out. They're, they're, not, they're experiencing it and- They're more alive. They're more alive. The pain is realer. Yeah, and it, and it strikes deeper. And this is what's super hard mm. and confusing. And I actually think that that, that, that call to the priesthood, um, because uh, uh, I was numbing out. Mm. And, uh, and when the Lord started to awaken my soul, he showed me how mm. kind of desperate um, my numbing was. And Did you like that clip? Be sure to click subscribe so you never miss out on our great content that's going to help you live life to the full.